When evaluating patients for surgical options for stress urinary incontinence, I think it's important to form an algorithm. Make sure that the goals that you can achieve with what you do are consistent and compatible with what they want. And for me, that includes obtaining a patient history, along with a physical exam, it's doing a pelvic exam, which would include evaluation of the urethra and the pelvis, looking for urethral mobility, determining if there's prolapse, looking at pelvic floor muscle tone. When I discuss Solix, I'm an advocate for it. I'm really discussing for them what I think are the attributes that set it apart from other slings. My discussion really goes into the history of slings, talking about what we did before slings, talking about alternatives to slings, and then within slings, talking about the generations and the development, and really what led to where we are today. And I think that gives patients a, a roadmap for how it works differently than other associated slings. And so for patients, it allows them to make, I think, a really clear decision on what they're looking for and why this is different. When I look at Solix and what its attributes are, it really, for me, gets into a discussion beyond the procedure itself. I think that any procedure that we do to treat this should be effective, it should be consistent, it should be reproducible. And Solix is markedly different than with slings that require ingrowth. Using a mechanically fixated sling means that you have strength from the moment you walk out of the OR, which means that those restrictions that prevent patients from getting back to life are not the case with Solix. When I utilize data to try to determine what clinical choices I'm gonna make, I always think of data as, as a point of information that you need. So in this particular situation, what I'm comparing to is the generations of slings before. So I want a product that would be as efficacious, I want a product that's gonna be as safe, and I want a product that's got data to really show that over time it works. So when I look at data as it relates to single incision slings and Solix, I really feel that we're there. One of the things that I really like about Boston Scientific is they offer a lot of opportunities to learn in different ways. With didactic learning, with cadaver courses, with physician proctorship, with being able to get on the phone with an expert and discuss a case, to have people that can mentor you, and you're really supported every step of the way uh, through Boston Scientific. My biggest word of advice for physicians learning Solix and, and utilizing it is stick with it. Really learn about the therapy, learn about the advantages it has, and then find a way to get support so that you can learn how to do this because as you follow these patients, you're gonna find that they're very happy, very satisfied, and they're doing well. My take home message for physicians and for patients with Solix is it's a different game. And what I mean by that is it can be a completely different experience. And we need to get out of the paradigm of all of the reasons why patients should not do something. And we need to get past those barriers to where patients do something and get treatment that works, that's effective, that doesn't disrupt their life. Solix provides that.